Let's start with the latest revelation that four more cabinet ministers are not seeking re-election. Carla Qualtro, Marie-Claude Bibo, Dan Vandel, and Philomena Tassi have all told the Prime Minister they are not running when the next federal election comes around. This comes as a group of Liberal MPs are trying to push Trudeau out of the leadership. Philomena Tassi is one of the cabinet ministers who is not seeking re-election, and she joins me now. Minister Tassi, welcome to the show. Thanks for being here. Thank you, David. I, I know when you changed from your old job uh, in procurement to the current job in the Ontario Development Agency, you cited family health reasons uh, as one of the reasons you wanted to take a, a bit of a step back in your cabinet role. Is that the reason you're, you're not re-offering in the next election as well? So it, it's rooted in my decision that uh, now's the time that I need to be closer to my family. So you're, you're right in that. Uh, when I was in PSPC, uh, actually just prior, my husband had uh, suffered a couple of strokes. And, um, and when I went to the Prime Minister, it was interesting, David, because I was going to the Prime Minister to say that I, I thought I was um, exiting Cabinet when I had the first discussion with him and uh, said really that I needed to be closer to home and I needed to spend a bit more time at home. And um, he was very understanding and empathetic and found the solution that he would provide for me, the opportunity to serve in a portfolio that would keep me closer to home. But you're, you're right in, in terms of today's decision. This is all about uh, being closer to home and my family. So when did you officially tell the Prime Minister of your decision not to run again? I know the consultations between him and his staff with candidates getting ready for the next election is, is a thing they have to do. What can you tell us about your timing and when you informed him and, and that you wouldn't be re-offering? So look, at I, I position myself because as I've said, it was, I was monitoring the situation at home and it was ongoing, right? So I'm looking at what is happening at home and then what the job requires me to do and monitoring that situation to ensure that if I was staying in, that I would be able to stay in and provide Canadians with the, the commitment that they uh, deserve. And so um, I, in terms of the, the nomination process, I positioned myself over a year ago or about a year ago with all the requirements having met them, but with the with the caveat that, of course, I'm continuing to monitor the home situation. And so it's been the last couple of months where I've had a couple of conversations with the Prime Minister to talk about the situation uh, that I'm in now and, uh, and uh, have that discussion about uh, moving forward. Okay, because you, know, um, you know how people are going to look at this. You're one of four cabinet ministers coming out today saying they're not running again and they're going to step aside to make way. We know things are probably going to come to a head about these, uh, the, these efforts inside your caucus to force a leadership change at the caucus meeting next week, and people are going to say these are maybe connected. What do you say to that? Well, I think that people that know me know that I'm a very open person. Uh, I have always said that I am monitoring the situation at home. This, uh, this isn't an easy decision for me. It's a very emotional day, but I know that I'm doing the right thing. And, you know, when I entered politics, I made that promise to myself. I always wanted to ensure that whatever decision I made in terms of moving forward and serving my constituents, but also in my personal life, that I was making the right decision. And, I, and, and that's what provides me with the comfort today. Uh, I have a husband that has supported me every step of the way. Uh, and I'm here today because of the support that he's offered me. It's time for me to be closer to home now. And, and you know, I had that conversation with the Prime Minister a couple of years ago, and he provided me the amazing opportunity of serving in uh, federal economic development, which I've been happy to do. But now's the time to, uh, to be closer to home. So, so in your statement, in, in a letter that's been made public, uh, you say you believed in the Prime Minister in 2015 and you believe in him now. So I take that to mean you are not part of any of these efforts inside the caucus to try to mobilize and organize to force the Prime Minister to reconsider staying on a, a, as leader. That's a safe assumption, I assume. What do you make of these efforts that we're all hearing about? So first, you're correct. I, I am not a part of that. I haven't seen the letter. Um, Second, to the second question, I would say, look, caucus has the right to express their concerns, what they're hearing from constituents, raise questions. We meet, we meet when we're in Ottawa weekly, and the prime minister sits at those caucus meetings, the national caucus meetings, and he listens intently to what we have to say. And I believe he's understanding, he's empathetic, um, and, and he's responsive. 
And so I, I, while I agree that my caucus colleagues have the right to, you know, express their concerns, their issues, uh, I believe those conversations should be taking place in, uh, in national caucus and in, in the caucuses that we have. Well, it sounds like it's, it's headed that way. Uh, it, that's certainly from my conversations with some of your colleagues in caucus and in private conversations, but also in public conversations. Sean Casey, the MP for Charlottetown, was on the show earlier this week, and he says he believes Justin Trudeau should leave as, as leader of the Liberal Party based on what people are telling him in, in Prince Edward Island. What are people telling you in Hamilton? Where, where do things stand in your riding? So, look, I, I would say a couple of things. Like, when you're out there and you're knocking on doors and you're talking to people at fairs, you have people expressing different views. Some people come up to me and say, I think that the prime minister is doing a great job. He needs to stay. You have other people that come up and say, I don't think the prime minister needs, I, I think he should go. So this is politics. Like You're always going to get people expressing different views and opinions. And uh, I respect that. And I look for opportunities where people will say to me, you know, provide their uh, views and opinions, and I'm their voice in Ottawa, in fact. So I, I you know, I think that uh, people have the right to express their views. We as MPs need to listen to those views, and then we need to bring that back to caucus and have those discussions in a caucus, in the caucus room. We, we've and, heard and I will say this in terms of the Prime Minister. Look, campaigns change everything. They're game changers. When you start a campaign, everything changes. You know that. And he is one of the best campaigners, if not the best I've ever seen. So that's the the root. My my comments about having confidence in the prime minister. I've had confidence, as I've said in my statement, and and you've uh, highlighted since 2015, and I do to this day. Um, and he does listen to caucus. So I think we just need to have the opportunity to have that discussion. Right. So the opportunity to have that discussion. But uh, do you think Justin Trudeau uh, should stay on and should lead the Liberal Party into the next election? It sounds like you do. Am I understanding you correctly? If it's his decision to stay on, which it, it is right now, I support him in that decision. What's your opinion, though? What do you think uh, is best for the Liberal Party right now? If he decides to stay, I think that that's best for the Liberal Party. That's his decision to make. And I support him in that decision. Right, I gotcha. Okay, so, so help me understand then, uh, uh, Minister Tassie, because, you know, we've seen different numbers, more than 20, 27, I'm hearing closer to 30 now have maybe signed this. Other reports, maybe as much as 40. It, it's all very fluid. It's a bit like punching fog, I will confess to that. But what is your sense of, of how significant this discontent is inside your caucus and, and how, how organized and strong this effort is to try to force a conversation, uh, or if not an outright leadership change, when caucus meets next week? You know, David, I, I, I think the analogy of punching fog is right. Like there's different rumors that are going around with respect to numbers and a letter. And and I, I just haven't been a part of it and I haven't seen it in terms of this, what people are talking about. So, I, you know, I can't weigh into, okay, how many are there and what's the letter look like? Like I don't have any specifics in that regard. But I think that the opportunity for the prime minister to respond, to listen, which he does, mm. And then to have the opportunity to respond, uh, that's what we need right now. And uh, my guess is that's what's going to happen at uh, a national caucus. Right. So you have no doubt this is a real thing. It's a question of its size, its order of magnitude and, and how far it may go. That there are definitely people trying to do this is, is absolutely your view right now? Well, the people that have come out in public, those are the ones that I know about. Right. So the members that have come out in public and made that statement... Um, otherwise, I'm following the news like everyone else. So you know, <laughs> I don't I don't have any uh, inside information about uh, anything that is, you know, that is formulating and people that are signing their names. I haven't seen the letter. I, I, right. I, I haven't been asked to sign the letter. I haven't been asked to be a part of it. Um, so I can't really I, I have nothing to share further on that information. And I really think that instead of that happening in public, that the place for that to happen is at the caucus meeting. You can't criticize the prime minister for not listening. At the caucus meetings, he does listen to us every week. He listens intently. He understands. And I think, um, you know, it, it provides caucus members with the opportunity. And I would encourage those that are feeling uh, anxious and concerned uh, that they they that they make those comments known at the at the caucus meeting. Philomena Tassi, I think your next caucus meeting is going to be an exciting one. Uh, I want to thank you for joining me today, and, and uh, best of luck to you and your husband uh, after politics winds down. Thanks for being here. Thanks, David.
So that's just one of the Liberal ministers leaving Cabinet uh, before the next election. Philomena Tassi is among four ministers that have told the Prime Minister they're not running for re-election. That news coming public today. Also, there's Carl Qualtro, Marie-Claude Bibo, and Dan Vandell. On top of that, we can mention Pablo Rodriguez and Seamus O'Regan, who resigned earlier this year. Now, it all comes at a turbulent time for Justin Trudeau's leadership, as he appears to be on a collision course next week with some frustrated MPs who think he should also call it quits. Louis Blouin is the Parliamentary Bureau Chief for Radio Canada. All right, Louis, four ministers announced they're not running all at once. What's the fallout here for the government? You know, they're not the biggest ministers for sure, but I think there are people who were there since the beginning. They've all been mm -hmm. elected in 2015 with uh, Justin Trudeau. So it sends kind of a signal of the end of the road for them, that this cycle is, is over. That, that's what I get from that. And the problem, I think, for the Prime Minister is that it's the accumulation. You know, we've seen also other important ministers close to him in the summer. I remember uh, Seamus O'Regan, Pablo Rodriguez decided to go that, you know, time, time's up and we're, we're just you're looking for something else. So I think that it doesn't send the signal of a healthy party. And I think that's the impression now that Justin Trudeau has to fight. And when you look at all the numbers, it's more than 30 mm -hmm. liberal MPs since the last election who decided not to run again or uh, just to go out and uh, left their job. So uh, it, that starts to be a lot of people. And I think, you know, the prime minister has to counter that signal now. Right. So, so four people who are leaving for very individual yep. reasons, like Seamus O'Regan and Pablo Rodriguez. Mm -hmm. So that's six ministers this year, uh, the last couple of months alone. Yep. We know a shuffle is coming. We're both hearing likely not until after the U.S. election. Why change until you know if you're dealing with President Trump or President yeah, if you Harris? You need to change some portfolios, do some strategic choices there. So, yeah, I guess it would be prudent to uh, wait a bit to see who's going to be uh, the next uh, resident of the White House for sure. Do, do we have a sense? Uh, it's unclear to me if uh, other ministers are going to announce they're not running again or if this is the end of it. It seems like they might have some you know, clarity. I'm I don't know. told it's the end of it until mm -hmm. it's not. So we'll see about that, David, <laughs> in the next few weeks. Uh, we'll okay. see. But what I'm hearing, that, that would be the last batch of ministers who are not running again. Uh, I'm also hearing for a uh, potential shuffle that there would be new faces coming mm -hmm. from caucus to the cabinet. Uh, so that's going to make, could, there could be an occasion there to try and, you know, launch something uh, in the next few weeks. Okay, we'll get to that in just a second. Because I, I, first I want to look ahead to next week because yeah. we've both been working the phones and talking to a lot of people about, we've had the turnover today, it's yeah. the turmoil next week. Because this effort to force the change, at the very latest, Louis, it's going to come to a head uh, Wednesday at yeah. caucus. Things could happen between now and then. What's your sense of just how large at this point this this ch push for change is? You know, I think Justin Trudeau should bring a helmet to that meeting. I hope for him. Uh, I think it's going to be tough. I think uh, everybody now is looking at that particular moment that's going to be crucial for him. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't know how he's going to approach this. Will he try to be in a listen mode and see where they can work it from there? Or maybe try and take a firmer stand. Just say, look, guys, if you're unhappy, you can just quit caucus and be it. And then uh, he would maybe, he could maybe try, you know, try and go through discrepancies between what the uh, different MPs are thinking and the ways to uh, go at this, because that's the thing. I think it's not totally unified in the way that they intend to do this. And I think right. there's a few ways to measure the severity of that. Who are these people? Are they running again or not? Are they going to stay anonymous? How many will they be? And also, are they ready to walk the talk and go to the end of the effort. That means going out of caucus, sitting as right. independent if the prime minister is not going out. Uh, and if, uh, you know, they don't, then I think uh, Justin Trudeau has way more wiggle room to try and stay in power and, you know, mm -hmm. get control of a caucus. Okay, because there's a couple of things there, and we've, bo we've both been talking about this. This is what we do off screen, by the yes. way, folks, so what Louis and I talk about. <laughs> Front of a coffee. Somewhere like between 25 and 30 is the number I've heard now yep. that assign that aligns with what yep. you've heard, but the expectation is that when this goes to caucus, there will be others, like Sean Casey, who we yep. had on the show Tuesday. He hasn't signed this, but we know what he might say if asked yep. to speak in caucus. What's less clear, we know the demand, they want a leadership change, yep. is what you said. How far are they willing to go with it? People like Sean Casey think the leader should change, but if he doesn't, they're still going to run. I've spoken to some MPs who say, you know, few of us are talking about voting non-confidence. Hmm. Some are saying, maybe I just won't run again. Others are saying, maybe I'll sit as an independent. There's no sort of unified, this is not like the Democratic Representative Caucus in the old Ref yep. Canadian alliance that formed a parliamentary bloc to force out Stockwell Day. It's very Yep. The demand is clear. What they will do if it's not met is unclear to Yeah, me. and if the groups get divided in smaller groups, then it's way more easier for right. uh, the prime minister and his advisors to try and get a hold of this. And, you know, it, there's also uh, maybe uh, this shuffle coming up. So that's the thing also. Like, could you send a message saying, you know, there's ministers that are going out today, 
then there could be some promotions. Uh, and then that could change the game because maybe some are going to be calmer if they know they might get them, uh, you know. Uh, well, well that's yeah. what I was wondering about with the timing of this because yeah. the four going out today, and we mentioned the other two. Now, Seamus O'Regan was replaced by Stephen McKinnon. So yeah. that that's, uh, there's that's no done. spot there. But Pablo Rodriguez's job as transport minister was given to Anita Anand. She's also still Treasury, Treasury Board, Board president. Yep. So that needs to be split up. So this is five opportunities yep. if he doesn't grow cabinet. I mean, what do you think, Louis? Do, do, does conquer, maybe, some of the mutineers uh, calm you know, down, or what do you think? Yeah, because if, if they know that in a few weeks from now, mm -hmm. and I think it would be a good move for them not to do it too early and keep it, you know, in right. the background there, uh, that could give uh, opportunities to the, for the Prime Minister to try and get a hold of some of the MPs that are maybe uh, unsatisfied, maybe not some of the signatories, but say, okay, maybe you can remove your name from this and, you know, we can put it yeah. uh, on the cabinet list. Uh, so we'll see where, where it goes, but I think there's a, probably... A, opportunities for him coming up uh, mm -hmm. but it's going to be a tough discussion and you know what I think it might be one of his most difficult moments as a, as a party leader so, you know we always say that oh you know it might be the, the you know he, he's come to the end there and he's always bouncing back but I think this time now it's probably the most serious problem he has in, in his own political family and the next few days are going to be crucial the way uh, he deals with that publicly but also mm -hmm. internally and the days before is there some things some calls he can make during the weekend to try and, right. and calm this uh, I, guess, I guess there's a lot of stuff we won't see that will be very important. Is there any doubt in your mind, just as a final point, it comes ahead on Wednesday. Uh, it seems to me neither side has a clear sense of the strength of the other side, mm -hmm. like how big uh, the, the mutineers are or how strong they are, how determined they are. There, there's a, a misjudgment, it seems, but it seems... There's no doubt in my mind at this point we're going to see some fireworks potentially on Wednesday. Uh, yeah, that could happen. And I know that there's some calls being made that have been made since uh, you broke the story last week uh, that uh, some senior advisors to prime ministers are calling around caucus mm -hmm. trying to get to, to know what's going on, how many people, how serious is it, uh, what's the format, what are they going to ask, uh, what are they going to stand up for. Um, you know, I think the prime minister probably feels ready and, you know, wants to deal with it. But, you know, it's a very solid test for him uh, because if he, not, if he cannot convince his own team that he's the man for the job, then he will have a big trouble doing it to convince Canadians in the next election. Okay, let's make plans to talk Wednesday. Louis wants yes. to know what's yes. going on. Absolutely. That's Louis Blouin, the Parliamentary <laughs> Bureau Chief for Red of Canada. Thanks, Thank man. You. Okay, we're going to start there with the power panel. Shachi Curl is the president of the Angus Reid Institute. Cameron Ahmad is a former head of communications to Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. James Moore is a former conservative cabinet minister. And here with me in the studio, Jordan Leichnitz is a former NDP strategist. Uh, good to see you all. James, uh, I'd like to start with you if I could. I mean, it's not n abnormal in the life cycle of a government, this stage of it, to see cabinet ministers announcing they're not running again. But losing incumbents when you're facing this turmoil makes it a little bit more fraught. What's your thoughts on this? Well, I mean, there are a lot of ingredients that go into it, but, but I think the <clears throat> sort of the cold, simple analysis of just saying Justin Trudeau's in trouble, therefore they're leaving, is, is probably not fair. To say that, yeah. that that doesn't have any impact at all is not, would, wouldn't be true either, right? You know, there's a reason why the Member of Parliament pension plan kicks in after six years, because the average length of a Member of Parliament's term is typically two to two and a half terms uh, thereabouts. And so, the, so that, that's kind of how long you're expected to serve. Most of these people have served nine years, three terms. Think about Carla Qualtro coming from British Columbia, you know, sitting on a plane for five hours every three days for nine years is a long time and a long, uh, you know, a long burden on the body and the family. So, uh, you know, the, the fact that Justin Trudeau is in trouble 20 points back, the whole litany of challenges that he has is probably an ingredient, but I think it's unfair to these individuals to say that that's the only reason why they're not running again. Yeah, I mean, Philomena Tassi was very open about the fact that her husband has had a couple of strokes, and I mean, that sort of, a, that takes an enormous toll on you, and you throw in a cabinet job, it, it, it's it's tough to, to manage it. So, Cameron, uh, you know, I'm assuming you still support the Prime Minister, unless you signed this letter, and you're part of this movement. Uh, this kind of turnover, I mean, is this an opportunity that, look, suddenly there's four or five spots here in cabinet that might calm some people down? or is this just another challenge they have to deal with in addition to whatever is going on in that caucus? I, I think uh, James is entirely right. I mean, first of all, minister, these ministers should be taken at their word mm -hmm. uh, because, as James said, politics takes a large toll on a person, on a family. They've served a long time. They've got a lot of accomplishments under their belt. Um, and they have more to contribute in life in some other way. But at the same time, you can't ignore the situation. And, and it just seems like the challenges are growing uh, for the government, for the party. Uh, if you're a, 
an MP who's thinking about running again, you want to make sure that there's enough time if you're going to step aside for a replacement, another candidate to be named, nominated and, and selected and for your team on the ground to be able to work for their success. Right. Um, I mean, there's talk of a shuffle come. Obviously, some form of a shuffle will need to happen. Happen. I think a lot of the traditional uh, wisdom will say that a shuffle is a huge opportunity for the government to re, you know, represent itself to the to the country. I think that's usually overstated. But what it does mean is that there's an opportunity to present some new faces at the cabinet table and mm -hmm. bring some excitement to caucus. And another thing that this means with multiple incumbents not running again is there's a whole roster of new people who are going to put their put their names forward, they're going to be nomination races across the country, and that can bring some renewed, I think, life and, and energy that is needed uh, to the party right now. Right. And just one other quick thing I wanted to mention, I really loved reading Minister Tassi's statement. I thought it's a bit veering off a little bit, but I think it was so heartfelt and really spoke and reflected the best of politics or what politics should be all about. You know, she talked about her experiences with constituents and right. bridge building with other MPs in the community. Um, and it, it was just a nice thing to read in, in the way we, you know, analyze politics these days. Politics is never nicer than when people are retiring. <laughs> it's the strangest thing I've ever right. seen when they're doing the job. It, it, it all changes when people are leaving. But Jordan, it, it sounds like the cabinet shuffle to replace these four, Pablo Rodriguez, because uh, you need Anand's doing two jobs, probably not until after the U.S. election, which makes a lot of sense. You want to know if it's going to be President yes. Harris or President Trump. Um, where do you think this leaves this government, though, that they've got this unrest in the caucus that's going to come to a head on Wednesday, and now you're losing some more incumbent which is not something you want. Uh, not ideal. No. Yeah. And, and I mean, look, I, I really, I think James uh, expressed it really well. This job has a shelf life. And mm -hmm. so I think we can't, uh, you know, you can't read too much into people, particularly from the class of 2015, um, who are ready to hang it up. That's a very long time in politics. And I think, you know, they're quite entitled, obviously, to, to take some next steps. But the, the reality is, is that the optics of this are pretty brutal. Coming in the same week as you're seeing growing dissent, I would say, from the Liberal caucus, there's a sense of momentum now that's picking up. Um, I don't know that this means that Trudeau can't stay, but certainly I think we're looking now at the trajectory of something that's uh, very much headed in the direction of a strong confrontation that we've thus far not seen from the Liberal caucus. And I think it's also notable to say that there really is a reluctance on the part of liberals in the caucus to challenge the prime minister. And you mm. can see that. Um, you can see that they, by and large, really understand themselves to be there largely as a result of Trudeau's own skills as a political campaigner, you know, and, and I think uh, maybe maybe uh, the, the minister was overshooting a little bit in terms of how those skills could potentially lift the party in the current circumstance. But look, nobody wants to do this, but there's now a group of people in caucus who feel that they must. Mm -hmm. And I think that really underlines some of the trouble that Trudeau is in right now, that people feel pushed to that point, even though they really don't want to be there. No, it, it, there is reluctance, Shachi, with some of the MPs you talk to who are part of this effort, not because necessarily they have stopped liking the prime minister, but their constituents have. And they're thinking about their own future and their own survival and the party's survival. And I'm here and they're finalizing the letter, you know, that they're going to send okay. to him, that they're in the final drafting and copy editing stage of it right now. I mean, where do you think all of this goes in the next little while? Well, that, that is the question, isn't it, David, is where does this go and the, what is the what's next? So, mm -hmm. you know, two very parallel sets of messages, one from, from the departing cabinet ministers, prime minister, it's not you, it's us, from the caucus members, prime minister, it's not us, it's you. But what happens after that? You've got to ask, you know, is there time with the way things are in parliament at the moment in a minority situation the NDP having pulled their their support and their guarantee from confidence and supply are, are the okay like game it out. Suppose the prime minister says, "Fine, everyone, I've heard you. You're really mad at me. Okay, I guess I'll leave now." As opposed to all the other times I've been asked to go, uh, what what room and space does that leave for the election of a new leader, the selection of a new leader? Uh, are are the opposition parties going to hang around and say, "Yeah, sure, we'll wait for that. We'll wait for you to get your house in order," or do we see more of a, a Rishi Sunak situation that we saw in the United Kingdom, where wave after wave of attempted 
coup and rebellion against the then conservative leader or the the continuing conservative leader, but not for much longer, uh, you know, resulted in the prime minister saying, well, to heck with all of you. Let's let's just go to the polls. Let's just have an election and get this over with. And all of you who are worried about losing your seat right now uh, or or with me as leader, you're going to lose your seat anyway. Is that what you really want? So there is a level of brinksmanship that we that may, we may well be setting ourselves up to, to watch and sit back with the popcorn. Well, yes, and, and that could all lead to a Pyrrhic victory for everyone involved in that particular stare down, mm-hmm. because that seems like a recipe for everybody uh, not getting what they want inside the Liberal Party. Okay. Well-